Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Nate. Welcome to our online class. I hope you've been enjoying the previous lessons. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Today we are going to be talking about the elements of the computer system. Now this is a foundation for any computer user or anybody who is learning how to use the computer system. If you must know how to use the computer system, you need to know how all the computer elements work together. Now, today, like I said, we'll be talking about the elements of computer and what are the learning objectives. At the end of this lesson, every pupil should be able to explain hardware and its type. You should be able to explain the human way. You should be able to explain software and its types. You should be able to mention the types of software. You should be able to install system and application software. And then you should highlight various ways of caring for the computer system. So what is the component of computer system or the element of computer system? Now, the element of computer system is is mainly categorized into four. Now we have the hardware, we have the humanware, we have the software, and we have the, um, okay, so, sorry, not three, not before. So the element of computer is categorized into three. We have the hardware, we have the software, we have the humanware. All of these parts work together to make a computer system. Now, the first one I want to talk about, I'm going to drop my slide, but I'll, just for you to understand better, we're talking about the human way first. Now, the human way refers to the computer user, you and I. Anybody who can use the computer system is referred to as human, as a human way. So, if you can use a computer system, either at professional level or at basic level, you are a human way. You are a human way if you can use a computer system at any level at all. Now, the computer system cannot work except a human way is operating it. That is why the computer system is not complete without a user. Now, aside that, there is also a need for us to talk about the hardware because the hardware represents all of the parts of the computer system that you can see and touch. All of the parts of computer system that you can see and touch, that is the hardware. And when we're talking about the hardware, the hardware are grouped into four. Namely, we have the input devices. The input devices are the computer parts that help us to send information in the into the computer system like the scanner, like the light pen, the keyboard, the mouse, the microphone, the joystick, and the light pen. They are all input devices. Now, let me give you an example. Let me explain with three of the examples why we refer to those computer parts as input devices. For instance, if you are typing a document using the keyboard, all the letters you're typing is shown on the screen, which means that whatever you are typing is directly entered into the computer system. So it means the keyboard is an input device because it takes in all the letters, the numbers that you type. Another example of input device is the microphone. If you are speaking to the, com to the microphone on your computer system, the microphone takes your voice into the computer system, then the sound comes out from the speakers. So the microphone is the one that takes in the sound. The speaker is the one that brings out the sound. So the microphone is an input device. The last but not the least example that I want to talk about is the joystick. When you are playing game using the joystick, you know that whatever thing you press, whatever action you press on your computer system, on your joystick, it goes into the computer system. That is why the joystick is referred to as the input devices. Now, which other parts, which other type of computer, of hardware do I want to talk about? That is the output devices. 
The output devices are the computer parts that brings out information from the computer system. Example is the monitor. Another example is the projector. Another example is the printer. Another example is, is the speaker. Another example is the plotter. Let me give you three. Let me explain these output devices using three of the examples that I've given to you. For instance, the monitor. Now, whatever you are doing on the computer system, the monitor is responsible to show, to bring it out for you to see. So if the monitor can show you what is happening inside your computer system, the monitor is an output device because it is bringing out what you are doing. Another example of an output device is the printer. When you type a document, if you want to have your document in a paper form, you use the printer to bring it out from the computer system. Another example is the speakers. The speakers is responsible for bringing out the sound that is going into the computer. So if I'm speaking to the microphone, the speaker is the one that is responsible for bringing out the sound for you to listen. A good example of, you know, this, another good example of uh, the output device is the projector. The projector also works just like the monitor. It brings out information on the computer system. Now, let's talk about the third hardware. The third hardware is the processing device. There's just one processing device and that is the system unit. The system unit is responsible for controlling every activity of the computer system. Now, the last but not the least hardware is the storage devices. The storage devices basically help to store information on the computer system. Now, there are different examples of storage device. We have the flash drive, we have the compact disk, we have so many of them. So, um, those are the hardware, examples of, ha of hardware, types of hardware. Now, what are the, the, what, like I told you before that human will represent the computer users. And I told you that anybody can be a human way. If you work in the bank and you use the computer system, you are a human way. If you work in the hospital, you work in different companies, architectural company, building company, and you use the computer system, you can be referred to as the as a human way. And there are different career opportunities in the world of tech for children who are interested, who love tech. I like to tell you that there are so many opportunities for children or there are so many opportunities for people in the world of tech. It's career opportunity for those who want to go into programming. You want to build games. You want to build websites. You want to build different apps. There's a career opportunity for people in the engineering world who wants to build computer system hardware. Those who want to repair the computer system. There's a great opportunity for children. There are so many opportunities for children, web designers, software engineers, network engineer, data management expert. There are so many ex so many career opportunities for children who wants to become professional human web. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is the software. Now, the software is also a part of the element of computer. Don't forget that we talked about three elements of computer system. We said the hardware. We have discussed the hardware. I told you also about the human web. We've talked about the human web and different career opportunities. The last one I want to talk about is the software. Now, if we have a human way, somebody who can use the computer system and all the parts of the computer system, which are the hardware, if there is no software installed in the computer system, the computer system cannot work. So the software is just like the life of the computer. It's just like the life of the computer. Without software, computer has no life. And there are different two examples of software. We have the system software and we have the application software. Now, I'm briefly going to explain the two. And then in our next class, we will learn how to install both the system software and the application software. Now, the system software basically is the most important software that a computer system needs to work. So if you buy a new computer system from the market, if there's no 
system software installed on your computer system, the computer system is useless because you will not be able to do anything on your computer system. So the first thing you do is to install the system software to your computer system. I'm sure a lot of you cannot do that. You need a computer software engineer or a computer engineer to install the system software for you. And there are different examples of system software. Now, you can also refer to system software as application, sorry, as operating system. So you see that you call it system software or operating system. And there are different examples of operating system. We have Windows, we have Linux, we have um, Ubuntu, we have so many software. But the one I'm going to focus on is the one that we use regularly, which is the Windows software. And there are different versions of the Windows software. We have Windows 95, we have Windows 2000, we have Windows Me, we have Windows XP, we have Windows Vista. Now, all of these windows that I have mentioned are already outdated. You will hardly find them on any computer system. But we still have Windows 7, we have Windows 8, we have Windows 8.1, we have Windows 10, and we have Windows 11. You can easily find any of these windows on a computer system. Now, these windows help the computer system to work effectively. Operating system help or Windows software helps the computer system to recognize the mouse, the keyboard, the joystick, the scanner, the monitor as one computer. And then it helps them to work together in order to perform just one particular task. Do you understand? Now, there is another type of software that is the application software. The application software basically helps us to do our daily activities. So if you want to type, you need an application software that can be used for typing, which is a Microsoft Word. You want to play a game, you need the game application. You want to watch film, you need a VLC player or a media player to watch your film. You want to draw, you need applications like Paint, like Corel Draw to draw, or like Scratch. So these application softwares are the softwares that we use for our day-to-day -day activities. So basically, these are the things that we need to learn in this class. When we meet next week, I'm going to explain to you or teach us how to install both the system software and the application software on our computer system. Sorry, today we really don't have an answer session, but there's a quiz activity for us to do at the end of this video. But by next week when we meet, we have the hands-on session. So see you in our next class, everybody.